In the heart of a peaceful town, a chill wind blows, carrying whispers of a haunted past. Our tale begins with a group of friends, each one unique in their own way, tied together by the bond of camaraderie. The air is thick with anticipation as they gather for an evening of fun, laughter, and a little friendly competition. The venue for this gathering, an old house, a relic from a bygone era, a place where every shadow holds a secret, where each creaky floorboard tells a tale. The house, a character in its own right, stands as a silent witness to the evening's events. Its dark corners and dimly lit rooms are filled with an eerie quiet, a quiet that seems to be waiting, biding its time. An old grandfather clock ticks away, marking the passage of time, its rhythmic sound a constant reminder of the hours slipping away. Among the friends there's an air of infectious excitement, the thrill of the unknown, the joy of an adventure waiting to unfold. The star of the evening, the source of their excitement, is a seemingly innocent board game, a relic found by one of the friends in the dusty, cobweb-filled attic of this very house. The game, old and worn out, its bright colors faded by time, seems to hold a certain charm, a certain allure. But this is no ordinary board game, this is a game that has been shrouded in mystery, whispered about in hushed tones, a game that has been passed down through generations, its origins lost in the pages of time. The friends, unaware of the game's dark history, eagerly gather around, their faces lit up with anticipation, their hearts beating with excitement. The game board is laid out, dice are rolled, tokens are moved, and the game begins. As the night grows darker, as the shadows grow longer, the friends are drawn into a world of the unknown, a world where their deepest fears take form. Little did they know they were about to play a game that was no mere child's play. As they settled around the dusty board game, an eerie silence fell over the room. The game itself, a peculiar artifact of unknown origins, was a captivating blend of mystery and intrigue. Its rules were simple enough, roll the dice, move your piece, and face the consequences noted on the space you land. Yet there was something more to this game, something that whispered of long-forgotten tales and shadowy secrets. As the friends began to play, their initial apprehension was quickly replaced by laughter. Each roll of the dice led to a strange coincidence, a peculiar twist of fate that seemed almost too precise to be random. A roll of three might lead to a sudden gust of wind, while a roll of six could cause the room's temperature to drop inexplicably. At first, these strange occurrences were dismissed as mere coincidences, lending an air of supernatural charm to their game night. But as the game progressed, so did the intensity of the events. The lights in the room began to flicker, casting an ominous dance of shadows against the walls. The wind outside howled like a beast in torment, rattling the windows with its fury. Even the game pieces seemed to take on a life of their own, moving across the board with an eerie autonomy. Laughter slowly turned to nervous chuckles, then to silence. The friends glanced at one another with wide-eyed apprehension, the jovial atmosphere of their game night now tainted with a creeping dread. The game, once a source of amusement, had become a catalyst for their deepest fears. The board seemed to pulse with an energy of its own, its cryptic symbols and cryptic instructions now a chilling testament to its otherworldly nature. The friends could no longer deny the unsettling reality. They were not merely playing a game, they were participants in a ghostly spectacle, pawns in a spectral dance that transcended the boundaries of their understanding. Suddenly the laughter ceased, the game was no longer a game. The walls of the house seemed to close in, as if they were a part of the game itself. The jovial atmosphere that once filled the room was now replaced with a creeping sense of dread. Each roll of the dice, each move on the board, seemed to echo through the house as if amplifying the terror that was beginning to take hold. Slowly but surely the game began to reveal its sinister nature. Each friend, in turn, found themselves facing their deepest, darkest fears. The sound of a loved one's voice echoed eerily from down the hall, beckoning them into the unknown. It was as if the game was mocking them, using their most intimate fears as a weapon. The air in the room grew colder, a chill that seemed to seep into their very bones. It was an otherworldly cold, one that the roaring fire in the hearth could not quell. It was a cold that spoke of the grave, of things long dead and forgotten. Out of the corner of their eyes, they began to see things. Shadowy figures that seemed to flit in and out of existence, always just on the edge of their vision. They were never quite sure if they were seeing things or if the game was manifesting their fears into reality. 
The feeling of being watched, of unseen eyes boring into them became a constant companion. The room seemed to pulse with an energy, a malevolent force that fed off their fear. The once innocuous board game now felt like a portal into a world of nightmares. The friends realized the chilling truth. They were not playing the game, the game was playing them. In their growing desperation, they tried to stop, to put the game away. But each attempt was met with a greater manifestation of their fears. It was as if the game was punishing them for trying to quit, for trying to escape its wicked grasp. In the heart of terror, they realized, to end this nightmare, they must finish the game. With trembling hands and hearts pounding like war drums, they approached the final round. In the hushed silence that was punctuated only by the eerie creaks of the haunted board game, they braced themselves to confront their fears. They weren't just playing a game anymore, they were in a battle, a battle against their own phantoms, the terrifying specters of their past. The room pulsated with an energy so palpable that it was like a living, breathing entity, filled with their deepest insecurities and darkest secrets. Every roll of the dice was a gamble, a toss-up between salvation and damnation. Each clatter of the dice against the board echoed like the ticking of a clock, counting down to their destiny. The dice weren't just cubes of chance anymore, they were keys, keys to the doors of their past that they had kept tightly locked away. Their eyes reflected a myriad of emotions, fear, anticipation, regret, and a glimmer of hope. They were on the precipice of their worst nightmares, yet they clung on to the sliver of hope that they could triumph over their fears. The game had become a mirror, forcing them to face the reflections they had long denied. As they navigated through the maze of their fears, each turn of the board brought forth a new challenge, a new ghost from their past. They were no longer just friends gathered for a game night. They had become warriors, warriors fighting their own demons. But the true horror of the game lay not in the phantoms it conjured, but in the truths it revealed. The game had stripped them bare, revealing not just their fears, but their true selves. They had seen each other at their most vulnerable, their most human. And in that vulnerability they found a strength they didn't know they possessed. The air was thick with suspense as they prepared for the last roll of the dice. The room held its breath, the game held its breath, they held their breath. And then with a final roll of the dice, the game was over. As the last dice fell, the room was filled with an oppressive silence. The air, once thick with the specters of their deepest fears, now seemed to breathe a sigh of relief as the phantoms evaporated, vanishing as swiftly as they had materialized. The friends, a motley crew of laughter and camaraderie just hours ago, now sat drenched in terror and disbelief. Their faces, pale and haggard, bore the unmistakable mark of a nightmare lived in the raw reality. But they were safe, and in that safety, they found the strength to make a solemn vow. A vow to never again play this haunted game that had so cruelly turned their innocent fun into a chilling dance with the macabre. The accursed board game, its pieces still whispering of the horrors they had unleashed, was locked away in a forgotten corner of the attic, never to see the light of day. In the quiet town, a chill wind blew once more, carrying whispers of a game night they would never forget.